Hello. For his trivia number eight, I'm going to go over uh, the Wilmot Proviso of 1848. This happened, occur this occurred right after the um, finish of the Mexican-American War in 1848, in which the United States gained new territories in the West and how they will um, decide whether, you know, whether it's slave whether it's a slave state or a free state, basically stuff leading up to the Civil War. Um, this, uh, after the Mexican-American War, we have something in American history known as the uh, sectionalism crisis that really goes from the end of the Mexican-American War in 1848 all the way to the beginning of the Civil War in 1861. Um, now, getting to the Wilmot Proviso, um, the Wilmot Proviso, or Proviso, or however you pronounce it, um, it was actually um, proposed and made up by Pennsylvania Democratic Congressman David Wilmot, Wilmot hence the Wilmot Proviso, named after him. Um, he proposed a measure in Congress that would ban slavery from all the territories taken from Mexico. So, territories like California, Nevada, Utah, parts of Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico, all of those new territories, you know, no matter how they're divided up into territories or states, he wants to make sure that no slavery will be permitted throughout the entire territory that was seceded from Mexico to the United States. Um, this measure, however, failed to pass. Um, although it is important for several different reasons. Um, it shifted um, the American public's thought about slavery in the territories. That's one of its importance. Um, there, there was a... Um, there was something added on to this proposal. Um, the current president, President Polk, um, who had won, you know, won the war. Um, he was actually in favor of this Wilmot, Wilmot proviso, and um, what, what it, what he, what President Polk wanted to do was um, he wanted to um, model it off the Missouri Compromise and to extend um, the um, compromise line. He thought that. Um, adding this proviso and supporting this bill would extend um, this line that was created in which he favored and extended. Um, this, however, was not to be. Um, a lot of people in the North opposed um, this idea, and oddly enough, a Northerner came up with the idea, but um, he, he opposed it because, and they mainly opposed it because they thought it would never work. Um, they thought that even if they do draw the bill up, um, you know, Southerners would ignore the proviso and move in with their slaves anyway into California and Utah and all that other area, those other areas. Um, this bill, however, failed to pass. Um, when it, it was brought forth, um, it really didn't have much of a chance. Um, the, the United States Congress actually did pass it. Um, but if you remember your constitutional history, you need both houses of Congress to pass it in order to become a law. So even though the House passed it, um, the Senate failed to pass it because of a lot of because the Senate was mainly controlled by um, mainly slave owners in the South. Um, they had the upper hand in the Senate and they knocked the bill down before it could get passed in the Senate. So even though it passed the House, it failed to pass the Senate. So from knowing constitutional history, the bill did not pass. Um, the Wilmot Proviso just um, caused more problems. Um, this was 
um, right after the Mexican-American War, and not only was it right after the Mexican-American War, but it was right before a major election in 1848. So this really set the tone for the 1848 election, debating of sectionalism and, you know, whether the state could remain free or who decides whether state remains free or slave, you know. How do we admit a free state? How do we admit a slave state? Stuff like that. So even though the Wilmot Provisio failed, it really set the tone for basically everything for the next 20-some years.